Joshua chapter 1. If you will, stand with us out of honor to God's word. It says, verse 1, Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, uh, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all the, this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this uh, Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee. That's a key uh, word right there. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance, the, uh, for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days ye shall go pass over this Jordan, and go into a, uh, possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. And to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to half of the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. And your wives and your little ones and uh, your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them, until the Lord hath given your brethren rest, and hath he given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then you shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of Jordan toward the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou hast commanded us we will do. Whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we have hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever, shall, uh, whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words in all thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Brother Tim, if you'll lead us in prayer. Amen. You can be seated. Great. I have three over here and I have four over here. Y'all seven are going to be helping me tonight. The best thing about sitting on the front row, ain't it? No, what I want to talk about tonight, this is the only place in the Bible that you're going to find the word success. That's in Joshua 1.8. But Joshua had to do some things to be a success. It didn't just fall in his lap. There is a formula for success. 
And, and we will see this in just a few seconds. But I want you to notice at the end of the reading of the scripture, what happened? Notice what they said to Joshua. They said, Where, whatever you say do, we're going to do. That is a total, complete turnaround from what their forefathers did. Right. What their forefathers did, he says, let's go in there, take on the giants, let's knock out the giants. And they said, nope, they're too big. Right. Yeah. And you know what? Every one of them, they all died. So they, that left a testimony for this generation. I don't want to be like mom and dad. I don't want to be like my grandfather in this sense. They were doubting God. They were doubting Moses. And they ain't here. So their whole attitude has completely changed. Whatever you say do, we're doing. Well, you, you, you've delivered on what you promised. We have got our possession, and now we'll go help our brothers get their possession. Now, I want you to see some things. Here's some things. We talk about success, but what's going to keep you from success? Okay, first thing. Stand up. Come on, Kenzie. Why don't you just stand here and hold this. See, I learned how to spell, y'all. I got me some flashcards. So I was telling Miss Annette a while ago. You want to know what's going to cause you to not be a success? One thing is F, fear. Fear is going to stop you from seeing your potential. It's, they always call it the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown is worse than the actual thing. They always say if you let a monster out of its closet, you'll find out it's a lot smaller than what you thought it was. Fear has crippled so many people. They will not take that step of faith because they're afraid of what might happen. Well, what if, what if, what if? You place so many things in your mind. Your mind will go out of control. Your mind as a human is always going to go to worst case scenario. And even worse than worst case scenario. A lot of the things we imagine ain't even possible. You don't believe me? Have something come up. And what you do, you go to Google or you got cancer.com. You start Googling everything. Oh no, I have a little, I have this, I have the, I've got cancer. I'm dying. That's exactly what happens. I've done it. So I'm talking from experience. I've went to that Google, and I'm telling you, the things that pop up with every symptom is, you're a goner. Might as well go ahead and pack it up. But fear has crippled so many people. Next. Okay, Aniston. Oh, you got A for Aniston. There you go. A, apathy. That's a big word, preacher. Apathy. That means don't care. I just don't care. I hate to say it, we are, we've got a generation of people right now that really just don't care. They don't care if they go to their job, if they get fired, if they don't get fired, I'll find another one. I don't care. I just won't show up. And then they move on to the next one and they're fired from that one in three weeks. Why? Because they just don't care about anything. I mean... Let's just go back just a few weeks ago to Appalachia. That young man just didn't care. You're right. yeah. If I take somebody out, I don't care. See, and I'm not preaching against games. I grew up on games. But we have had games so violent it desensitizes people. They automatically think, oh, if I kill them, it ain't really going to hurt them. They're going to regenerate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. You just took somebody's life. It's over. They're in eternity. And that's what we have. We've got a generation. And I'm not talking about the younger generation. The older ones are just as bad. We've got a generation of I don't care. Why do we have so many deadbeat parents? Walk out on their family and don't worry about supporting their children. I'm just being honest. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't a fun message to preach. But here, the next thing that keeps us from being a success. You ready, Hannah? I. The I problem. And this goes both ways. This goes both ways. You have one group of people that think I'm the stuff. I'm the best. 
Ain't nobody as good as me. You wish you were me. Uh Uh-oh. Well, at least we got some confession. That's the first step. But we've got so many people that have that mentality. You know what? I could have done it better. Now, Adam, he's a good preacher and everything, but you know what? I could have preached a better sermon. You know, that choir director, he's, he's good and everything, but I could have done a better job. We've got, that, we've got an eye problem, y'all. We have so many people that are so sold on their self, they think they're God's gift to everybody else. And they are actually crippled and don't even realize it because they are walking around with such a big head. But then you have the other side of that coin, the eye problem. Well, I'm no good. Nobody nobody cares about me. They don't want to hear me testify. They don't want to hear me sing. They don't want to hear... I I have nothing they want to hear. I'm I'm not that good of a singer. It's like I said last week. You know what? Preachers are going to say some wrong things. They got to get over it. You know what? Singers are going to miss a note every now and then. You got to get over it. And stop beating yourself up. I believe Paul said forgetting those things which are behind. You know what? Let it go. I can't change what's already happened. I can't. And I'm going to beat myself up and beat myself down thinking I'm not good enough because what's happened in the past, I cannot fix yesterday, but I can fix tomorrow. And if we stop focusing on our past mistakes, stop focusing on I, 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 you know what? I can't is just as much as I could do better. Just as bad. It'll cripple you just as bad. Now, I want y'all to come in a little bit more because we're going to have a huge gap. All right. Next. You know what else? L. Lost. I want you just to hold it. Stand, stand over there beside Hannah. Lost. A lot of people have got their selves thinking, I'm good. I'm good enough. What they're doing, they compare their self. Well, if they're a Christian, I am too. The problem is you're comparing it to someone else. When you compare to the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't stack up. You're not good. I'm not good. I would never be good enough to reach the cross. Jesus could. And I want you to see, and a lot of people have convinced themselves that because I repeated a prayer, I did this, I'm okay. I'm telling you, repeating a prayer is not fire insurance, people. The Bible, Jesus preached repentance. John the Baptist preached repentance. And I'm going to tell you, if your little prayer didn't change your life, you didn't get the real deal. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So I'm telling you, if your little prayer did not do any changing, it was just falling on deaf ears. It's the Word of God. Let's go on to the next one. You're up, Addison. You... Until. See, everybody's got good intentions, but they're always waiting until that next big thing. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to start tithing, but I'm going to wait till I can uh, afford to. I'm waiting until that time, until I get that big raise, until I can uh, get to that next level. That's when I do it. I have good intentions. And it's not just that. Oh, I'm going to start being more faithful to church once I can free up my schedule. I have, I, have, I have an idea. Just wait until that time. And that's the problem. A lot of good intentions are causing people, I'm going to do it. I really, really am. I do believe it was Agrippa that says, um, uh, wait until, almost you know, almost persuaded. And Felix says, wait until a more convenient time. Until, until, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I promise you, Paul, I'm going to do it. But just wait until a more convenient time. Mm. Come on, Connor. Connor, 
Hold that R up. This, this is the flip side of that. See, we have those people that are sitting on their pew, sitting on what God blessed them with, and they're waiting until something happens. But you want to know what? There's another flip side to that, and that's that R, that run down. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Oh, man. I want to tell you, I was in that boat. I can speak from experience. I felt like I had to do everything in the church. I had about 10 different jobs. And I was wanting to get rid of them, but nobody else would do them. So, so I said, I ain't going to let it die, so I'm just going to keep busting, busting it, and I'm going to kill myself. And you know what? I got to a point where I, got to, where I did not want to even go to church. I was the Martha. I was working, 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 and I forgot the most important thing. I'm going to tell you I was guilty. I'm not going to sit up here with a halo on my head. But I thought I was doing a good thing. Because I was doing this. I was doing that. I was doing the other. Do you realize? You can work too much. And that's the reason we are a church body. One person does not need to do all the heavy lifting. It should not fall on one family. Ain't that right, Humphrey's family? Can I get a little louder amen on that? I know what, it's, I know what they go through, but it seems like you're always got to go, got to go, got to do, got to do, got to do. We need to pick up the slack for them. This ain't a fun message, y'all, but it's going to help you. Do you realize, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? And it said, take one day and rest. Do you realize that was just as big of a commandment as thou shalt not kill? Let that sink in for a second. Taking one day, the Sabbath day, was just as big of a commandment as thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. But we think killing and stealing and running around on your spouse is worse. Guess what? If you don't honor God... Even, even God took the seventh day to rest. Let that sink in. Did God need it? No, God didn't need it. But he was setting an example for us. We need to take a break ourselves. And that's the problem. A lot of people don't know how to do that. And finally, come on, Levi. E. You know what that is? That's evil environment. What are you surrounding yourself with? If I was to go out to your car right now and listen to the music you've got in there, what station is it on? Would you be embarrassed to let Brother Adam, or would you be, let me get in the car, Brother, and cut it, cut it off real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking, what, what are you looking at when nobody's looking? Uh-oh, I'm hitting a snag here. What are you surrounding yourself with? It's, if, you, if you have an evil environment, you know what? Trash in is going to be trash out. Why can't I get over my sin? Why does this sin keep so easily besetting me? It's because of what you're surrounding yourself with. What, even Paul says, the things I would not, that's what I do. And the things I uh, don't allow, I wind up doing it myself. He says, that's what I do. It's a constant. It is a constant fight. But I have good news. I have a Savior that can turn it around. I have a Savior that can turn it around. Let's look at that first one, the fear. What does he say for that? Well, you know what? Four times in this passage, what does he say? He says, be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide an inheritance. What does he say? He says, to be strong. Uh, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. He can take that fear, turn it around into a strength. You be strong. Don't let the devil get in your mind. God's not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You want to know what? You want to get, get rid of fear? Stand up to the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. You need to get a little strength about yourself. 
I'm going to stand up and I'm going to fight. I may fall, but I'm going to get back up again. And next time I'm going to fight. Guess what? You're not going to win every battle. You're going to lose some battles. But you want to know what? The war is already won. You need to be strong. That's what uh, God had commanded Joshua right here. Be strong. He said it three times, and then the people reiterated it in the last verse. If God says something three times, I think he means it. What does he say next? We talk about those until. I mean, the apathy, excuse me. What does he say in verse 1? Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, My servant is dead. See, there was a real situation. God can turn your apathy into an understanding. You need to understand what's at stake. That's what he had to do to Joshua. He says, Hey, newsflash. Moses is dead. He ain't coming back. He, you're the leader now. And if you don't step up to the plate, who will? Right. Joshua had to get an understanding. And that applies to us too. Do you realize we think, oh, nothing matters anymore. I'm going to throw my hands up and quit. I just don't care. Well, when you do that, your children are watching. And all they're doing is watching a quitter. Yeah. Is that the message you want to send your kids and your grandkids? I'm a quitter. It's getting a little quiet in here, y'all. You got to understand what's at stake. It ain't just you you got to worry about. Other people are looking at you. Other people are depending upon you. And I'm going to tell you, I want to set a good example for my kids. I don't want my children to look up and say my dad was a quitter. I may go down, but I'm going down fighting. Then, we have the I problem. See, it wasn't about Joshua no more. It wasn't about Moses. You know who it was about? Christ. It's not about I, I, I. We have those people that say it's about me. I could do better. I could do better. I could do better. God says pride goeth before a destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So before you get too big for your britches, you better realize you're nothing but a sinner saved by grace. You better realize that you're still in this flesh and you can fall. But you want to know what? You may also be that other one that says I'm no good. I'm not worthy. Newsflash, you're right. But I know one who is. And that's the reason he says over in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ. Notice a lot of people think I can do all things. They don't like to finish that C part, through Christ. Exactly. So that I Get your eyes off of I and get your eyes on Christ because that's what we're here for. If I have to suffer that his name be glorified, you know what? It's worth it. It's not about me. It's not about I. You might need to go to the doctor and get your eyes checked. (laughs) The next, L. I'm glad he can change that, turn that around. You can go from lost to a Christian. You can give your life to Jesus. You need to open your eyes like we just said and realize it's about him. You are not good enough, but I know one who is good enough. You are not perfect, but I know one who is perfect. You cannot bear your sins, but I know one who could bear your sins. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, if your eyes are open, you can become a Christian. You can give your life to Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior. And that can be the thing that stops you from being a failure. But notice what else? We have that until. He can turn it around. We just need to engage. We just need to do it as as Nike says. What did he say? 
He says in verse 2, he commanded Joshua, now therefore arise and go over this Jordan. It's time to get up and it's time to go. We have sat on it too many, too long. It's time to actually start doing something. It's time to start doing something for God. Instead of serving ourselves, instead of trying to build up all our wealth, instead of trying to build up all our name, it's time to start selling out for him and start getting up and start doing something for him what happened he says in verse 11 pass through the host and command the people saying prepare your victuals for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan notice they have been roaming around for 40 years he says 40 years is up people it's time to go I'm tired of being in this same rut it's time to go and that's what they did they got up and they went. They engaged the enemy. It's time to start getting a little engagement, people, instead of letting everybody else do it. Right. Well, Miss Amanda, she'll, ha- she'll figure it all out for us. She'll have something ready for us. Mm. I'm sure she could use some help. <clears throat> That's the reason he got engaged. Uh, <laughs> so, next thing, the run down. You know what you can do? You already turned it down for, or turn it around for me. Into an S, you need to start getting run down and start slowing down. For the people that just run, 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 slow down. You know, a lot of people think. Them until Christians, they think, oh, I'm the one that run, 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 run. I just need to slow down a little bit more. No, you're the one that needs to get going. But the ones that are busting it, that are constantly on the road, always trying to burn up the roads, seven days a week, trying to do it for the Lord. You know what? You need to take a little rest yourself. You don't believe me? What does the scripture say? I love it when the scripture even has it in there. What did he tell them? He says... Verse 13, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord, your God, hath given you rest. You know what? You need to call time out sometimes if you're the one that always feels like you're keeping the church going. And take a break. You can become Martha very, very quick and miss out on the Mary blessings. And finally... This is where I'm going to get finally. That evil environment, what you surrounding yourself with, the Bible clearly says, you already swapped it around on me too. You need to change it to scriptural surroundings. What do you mean by that, Brother Derek? You need to start getting in the Word of God. What does he say? Verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And I want to tell you, we wonder what's happened to the church when it used to. I remember growing up doing it. Greg can testify. We would sit down and we would have family devotion. When was the last time we sat down with our family and said, we're going to open up the Bible and we're going to pray together? You want to know why the church has lost its power? We ain't doing what we used to do. Every home, every home had that family devotion time. Had that time that they prayed together. Had that time where they sat down to a meal and talked to each other about what happened through the day and the goodness of God. Hmm. We've got away from that. And I'm not preaching against TV. I'm not preaching against technology because I think it's all good. I enjoy it. But when that takes away from the most important things, the devil's using it to destroy us. When we spend more time in that TV and never crack a Bible open, I'm going to ask you, not nobody speak out. How long have we opened up a Bible this week with our family? And how many TV shows have we watched with our family? I'm not preaching against TV again. I'm just saying, 
we're letting the most important things slide, but we're keeping the fun things. The fun things are still good, but don't get rid of the most important things. And what does he say? That thou, notice what it says, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. You know what? You start not letting the book of the law depart out of your mouth. You talk about the Bible. Meditate in it day and night. You start reading the Bible. And then you start living the Bible that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Notice what that failure just became. The only place in the Bible you're going to find the word success. Are you going to let Satan make you a failure? Are you going to turn it around? Let God turn it around for you and become a success. Thank you all kids. And Miss Amanda, if you'll be making your way up. Y'all can, can have them or y'all can sit down with them, whatever y'all want to do with them. But I just, I just showed seven ways the devil can ha make you a failure. And I'm going to tell you some of these. I've already admitted it to it right here in front of the whole church. I found myself guilty of several of them. So this ain't a I problem right now because I know I'm not better than anybody in here. But the question is, are we going to be man enough or woman enough to admit I failed, but I want to be a success?